Americans are not having babies anymore. The U.S. fertility rate fell to a record low, declining 2% from a year ago, according to the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC. This marks the lowest rate recorded since the government began tracking the data in the 1930s. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. I appreciate you clicking on the video to watch it. And since you're here, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and help me to grow this channel. And to those of you that are returning, welcome back. I truly do appreciate your continued support on my channel. And I hope that you are subscribed as well. Well, guys, in a day where instability exists and a constant state of upheaval seems to be a norm that we are being forced to endure whether we like it or not, there is one thing that remains consistent, and that is our ability to just keep hitting new lows. In the vein of troublesome statistics that demonstrate just how dire almost every aspect of American life has become, several recent articles have sounded the alarm on our country's unprecedented record of low fertility rates. As said in the opening video and according to this article in the National Review, it says the total fertility rate recorded by the CDC is the lowest since the U.S. government began tracking it nearly a century ago. It reflects a trend visible across the developed world in which women are less inclined to have children because of greater emphasis on career success and access to reproductive technology in predominantly secular societies. There were 3,591,328 total births in the U.S. last year, the fewest baby born in the U.S. for any year on record since 1979. And according to a lot of these articles, the drop in numbers has been led primarily by women between the ages of 15 to 39, which as a side note, does seem to fly directly in the face of the false Democrat narrative that the overturning of Roe v. Wade, along with all of these states that have implemented restrictions on abortion would lead to more forced births in this exact same demographic of women. So, Meanwhile, for women between the ages of 40 to 49, the rate of having children has remained unchanged. So the question is, of course, what is behind the significant drop in young adults pursuing family life, especially since this used to be a leading priority in American society? This is from an article in the Daily Mail where they do talk about some of these potential reasons. Some women are choosing to have children later in life and instead focus on their careers during their younger years. As fertility is linked to age, this can lead to some women never having children or fewer than they might originally have planned. Experts have previously warned that some are prioritizing careers over families, which they say has put the country on an irreversible path to economic decline. Many millennials also say they do, they do not want to have children. As a society, having a family in America used to be the American dream, or at least a big part of it. There were no restrictions on having a family, no one limiting the number of kids you could have, while heavily supporting and encouraging families to raise their kids how they want and instill the values that they feel are important. Another part of that was, of course, the unlimited opportunity that America offers and that so many people come here for. You can be whatever you want, you can have whatever you work for, and you can essentially work to set yourself and future generations up for prosperity. Those are the things afforded by capitalism and equal opportunity, despite the lies that leftist indoctrination camps disguised as education systems have taught these next generations to believe. And unfortunately, I do think that the last few years have really brought into sharp focus how so much of these destructive ideas were really sewn into the studies and curriculums of the public education system, the culture, the media, the entertainment, the news, social media, because it feels like there's this massive group of young adults now that believe that America is evil, that capitalism is oppressive, which is completely ridiculous, that traditional values teach you to be hateful and bigoted, and we also have this massive massive division between men and women, where it's now a profitable market to create content to bash each other. All of these have been extremely concerning developments in society that have all come together and essentially dropped this nuke on the birth rate, and we're getting to a level that we might not be able to come back from. So on this subject, I did come across a recent discussion between two hosts, Jessica Burbank and Amber Duke, on a show called The Rising, which is part of the Hills Network, and I will link it in the description box below if you want to watch the whole 
whole thing. But I did want to touch on a few of the factors that they pointed out that perhaps will give us more ideas as to why this is happening. And as we know, if we can really get to the root of why something is happening, then that gives us the power to be able to reverse it and to correct the problem. So the first young lady in the conversation who's not on the screen right now, she starts out by suggesting that the hormones in our food might be affecting women's fertility, which I would honestly consider as a massive factor. And I'm, I'm sure that the effects of what is in our food are probably not going to be known for a long time. And I'm actually kind of scared to find out. Uh, but then Jessica here points to things like access to contraception, prioritizing our careers, and economic instability as some of the primary reasons that young women in particular are delaying or foregoing having families at all. Um, when you when you talk to or when you poll women who uh, decide to have children later in life, um, a lot of them talk about the fact that they basically wanted to prioritize their career. They wanted to make a lot of money and get really comfortable before they decided to settle down and raise their kids. And then a lot of them want to return to work after they have children. So maybe they're having fewer children. Um, daycare and childcare prices are are pretty high. They're skyrocketing now. So it's if you want to go back to work or have to go back to work, that is basically eating up your entire paycheck. And so I think it's a combination of sort of economic and cultural changes between women being more likely to go to college than men, more likely to enter the workforce and have a high paying career. And then the expenses that come with having a child have really turned a lot of women off from being you know, 22 years old and starting a family, um, which is, I think, what probably a lot of our parents did. So I just wanted to stop it there and just touch on a couple of things that she said. And you can let me know if you disagree with her or you agree with her or what your thoughts are. So yes, I mean, as we all know by now, women have been heavily encouraged to pursue higher education and careers and kind of have this mindset now where they feel like they need to be financially comfortable before having a family and they don't want to be a 22 year old mom trying to figure it all out the way that our parents probably did. And I think it's really interesting that she specifically said women on their own feel like they have to be financially stable, which to me does point to this fact, as much as people don't want to hear it, that we have encouraged women to be more like men because there is absolutely no reason to ever instill that in women or in men that they have to accomplish these things by themselves. But to me, this does illustrate a major shift in our priorities, and I do think some of it has been intentional because it's not that it was easier for our parents to raise kids. I mean, yes, they did have a lower cost of living at that time, but they had their challenges, just like we have our challenges now. But what I see more than anything in so many of these young adults of these next generations is that they're afraid to struggle. So many seem almost incapable of problem solving. I think that facing challenges makes them a victim and not being able to have everything they want at a young age is a sign of a broken system. You know, when I turned 18, which was really not that long ago, I moved out of my parents' house and I moved in with roommates. It never even occurred to me to try to get my own apartment and I was certainly not of the expectation that I would have my own career set or my own house for a long time. I understood that as a young adult, this is the time of life when you start to figure out what you want your life to look like, but that it's totally normal for everything to not be in line at that time. Also, particularly because I was raised Christian, which might make some of you roll your eyes right now, but hear me out. Family values were always extremely important. They were the top priority. So it was normal for people my age as a young adult to get married young before the home was bought or the career was set and to work through all of those early life challenges with your spouse, to learn to budget based on what you had, to plan for the future together and to be willing to make those sacrifices, which in my opinion, something that would sound absolutely horrifying to most of Gen Z right now. But that's why we say that marriage is about building your life together so that by the time you do achieve that greater level of comfort, you already know how to overcome. You already know how to work through. You already know that you value your spouse enough to overcome things and to get through these tough times. And I do think that not going through these struggles as a young couple and waiting until each partner has built their own stable life separately and then trying to place them next to each other is a big reason why so many marriages and families are 
are failing right now. Young people are actually more miserable today because of the things that they have been taught to prioritize, but they just won't be told that, that they're miserable because they're not pursuing the thing that is meant to bring them the, them the most joy, which is the family, but that they're really miserable because America is horrible or that it's because we don't have enough free stuff. But let's go on. It's kind of unfortunate because you'll see these sort of anecdotal stories from women who say that they genuinely did not know or were not taught that when they got over the age of 35 or 40 that it was going to be incredibly difficult for them to have a viable pregnancy and they express a lot of regret about the fact that they didn't try to have a family sooner. So I think we're setting a lot of women up, women up for failure by advancing this lie that they can have you know, 10 to 15 years in their career and then they can just have as many kids as they want. I mean, the biological clock, as icky as it may sound, is 100% real. And uh, I think we need to be more honest with women about really what their options are. So this whole thing just kind of blew my mind a little bit. So you mean to tell me, as the radical left has insisted on shoving hypersexualized material into every nook and cranny of the public education curriculum, telling us that kids need to be more educated on this subject and that this is really to teach teenagers about consent and safe sexual practices and that opposing this stuff just means that you don't want your kids to learn about it at all and that you're just a conservative Christian bigot who wants to oppress the LGBTQ community. That with all of this stuff, in schools from like preschool to the PhD level of education programs that no one is teaching women about their biological clock. So of all the things that these people want to throw at our students from being able to pick your gender to how to actually perform some of the, the most depraved sexual acts with books, including pictures, that they, they haven't bothered to throw in a book or even an article about the information that actually matters. Ladies, let me be the one to tell you that you do not have forever. You Need to grow up and make decisions like you are not going to be 19, 20, or 25 forever. I mean, you can get a lot of procedures done to reverse the signs of aging, but there's no way to get your childbearing years back. And the last little chunk that I did want to touch on, first, Amber talks about the rising prices of homes and the fact that wages have not increased to meet those costs. And with the concern of all the costs that have come with raising kids and feeling like you have no choice to but to put them in daycare to keep up this two income home, it becomes a question of, well, if I have to put my kid in childcare all the time anyway, what is the point? But then she also poses the question of whether or not having a family is something that people are actually choosing because they don't want it, or is it a choice that they're feeling forced away from because we live in an economy that's increasingly difficult to manage. And I think all of those things are valid, but again, this goes back to my point of how many people, how many young people today think that they have to have that nice home and that nice car before you have kids when honestly you need to reverse your priorities go ahead and have your kids and then figure it out as you go because you will because it's important you will find a way to make it work as you know people like my husband and i have and generations before you even during the, some of the most challenging times our country has ever faced and then she goes on to touch on some of the poisonous ideas of feminism so we'll just listen to that really quick even though i know that we've all heard a lot of these things already have all of these options. There was an interesting wave of feminism. I almost call it like the the liberal Hillary Clinton brand of feminism, where it's like, you have to work and this is the culture and you should girl boss and put on a pantsuit and work the job. But that's really not giving women the chance to have a full life. It's like, if you wanna be respected, you have to be exactly what the man was during the most toxic era of patriarchy. And that's just not realistic when we think about human life. A woman should have the option to stay home and recover from a pregnancy. This sounds to me like she's making an actual like pro-choice argument if you really want to give choices to women. What that means is giving women real choices by making it actually possible to have a family. And this actually sounds like it echoes the recent proposal made by Carrie Lake in this video where people started accusing her of flipping her position on abortion. And even Elon Musk recently weighed in on this subject. He said any nation with a birth rate below replacement will eventually cease to exist. Thankfully, as we 
with most warnings that we receive these days, we do actually have real time examples to look to of what it's going to look like for us if we continue down this path. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, the CCP, because of their fears of overpopulation in the 1980s, they did impose their one child policy. But after seeing the critical impact on the lack of growth in their population, they eventually lifted those restrictions and then actually started to encourage people to have more children. But naively, they believed that simply allowing for the possibility of having children, they assumed that this would just naturally result in a baby boom. However, as it turns out, a change in laws did not erase the influence that growing up in a society that does not value raising families and does not value parental rights would have on the ones that they were now expecting to start reproducing. Even offering financial incentives to parents and removing penalties on couples or individuals for having children out of wedlock, that was not enough to change the small family or no family mindset that has been ingrained in their culture for so long. This is what their young people grew up with and this was now their value system. So this isn't just about making the economy more friendly to families and perhaps we should start listening to some of Carrie Lake's proposals on that, but we actually need to change people's mindset. This is about perhaps teaching our young people that having a family is actually a good thing and it is not something to be afraid of. That yes, it is hard, but it is the most worthwhile sacrifice you can make. And yes, it will test you, but you will grow in ways that you could never have imagined and that you could not grow otherwise. And there will be plenty of times where you wonder what the heck you got yourself into. But then in the next moment, you will wonder what you ever did before having children in your life. I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this in the comments below. Please be sure to like this video. I would also love it again if you would subscribe and help me to grow this channel. Keep it real guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!